And we'd like to welcome those of you who are with us on ESPN News or those of you who may have been watching the football game on ESPN. Dan Schulman and Jay Bill is with you at the Kettle in Spokane. Gonzaga with an early six-point lead on Arizona. Getting a friendly bounce is Parker Jackson Cartwright, sophomore point guard from Los Angeles to bring Arizona within three. If you're just joining us, first true road game of the year for the 6-1 and one Wildcats. They played last year down in Tucson, Arizona, won in overtime. No Caleb Tarzuski for Arizona, out several weeks with a foot injury. No Shemek Karnowski for Gonzaga, missing his second game with some back spasms. And Arizona hanging tough in this ball game, but they've got to do a better job of running half-court offense, working harder to get open. And they're going to get some opportunities. It's not a great perimeter shooting team. Gabe York, their top perimeter shooter, and he's the guy that has, he's basically been the Marcus Page last year for North Carolina. He's made more threes than all the rest of his teammates combined. That was the second foul on Ryan Edwards. So he's going to come out. Sabonis is getting ready to come back in. And at the line, Chance Comanche. So some younger players like Edwards and Comanche getting a chance to play a little bit more because of the injuries to Tarzuski and Karnowski. This is a linguistic uh, obstacle course we have today in this game. Comanche makes the first. As Sabonis returns, there's Karnowski. You know what the, the size of that? What do you think the size of that sport coat is? He's getting his clothing from <laughs> Thornton Mellon. <laughs> Hey, he's given you the business once about the big jokes. <laughs> You're lucky you've got more foot hey, speed than he does. We're in the same club. We're both shopping <laughs> at the big and tall store. Arizona back within one. Tollison with some good defense out on the perimeter, and he forces a turnover. And how about Pitts diving on that ball? Arizona doesn't get it without Pitts diving. Now Comanche down in the post, switches hands, rolls off the back of the iron, kept alive, and Sabonis with another rebound in traffic. Gonzaga can operate with multiple point guards out there. They got Melson, Perkins, and then McClellan can play the point and has as well. What a move. Great move by Sabonis. Switches hands and lays it in with the right. But he's just getting better and better as a low post player. Incredibly efficient. And one of the best offensive rebounders in the country. Wiltshire and Sabonis have combined for all 16 Gonzaga points. Well, Sabonis just has, doesn't have an off switch. Pitts with a nice drive to bring Arizona back within one. And Pitts has really come into the ball game and injected quite a bit of energy into this Arizona lineup. Nelson, or Perkins rather, handling now off to Wiltshire, misses the three. Sabonis got a hand on it, but Pitts controls. Well, that pick and pop action is so difficult to guard because you got a big guy that's trying to get back to Kyle Wiltshire. A steal by Eric McClellan. And another turnover for Arizona. And McClellan fouled on his way to the rim. We'll step aside with the Gonzaga leading by one. Well, Demonis Sabonis, one of the best players in the country, and you can see why. His ability to put the ball on the deck and get to the rim. His footwork is truly outstanding. Well, direct... T tonight's game is part of ESPN's Journey to the Tourney, presented by Sonic, a season-long spotlight on games that will impact the tournament. Arizona and Gonzaga met last year in Tucson, and this was a heck of a game, a battle throughout. Brandon Ashley with three straight shots to tie the game. T.J. McConnell with a couple of jumpers to secure the win as the Wildcats beat the Zags in overtime down at the McHale Center, 66-63. Two of the best programs, not only on the West Coast, two of the best programs in the country, and great to see this becoming more of a rivalry on pretty much now an annual basis. Yeah, two great coaches that are great friends and incredibly competitive. I think it's been really impressive how Arizona has come out in the first few minutes of this ball game. They're just down one, and with a team in its first true road game with some, some younger players, for them to, to do this well and get off to this good a start is a good sign for them. Zags in white, Arizona in red, a one-point lead as we near the midway point of the first half. Wilcher with 10, Sabonis with the other six for Gonzaga. They're out there along with Dranginis, Melson, and Perkins. Gonzaga's got to continue to go inside. That's where they've got the advantage, and they can put the most pressure on this Arizona defense. Dranginis inside, Wilcher off the glass, no, and down with the rebound, Kadeem Allen. You don't see Kyle Wilcher miss many of those. 
Boy, the multiple actions that Gonzaga runs on the offensive end, really hard to guard. When they move it to the second side of the floor, the third side, boy, they move that defense and make it really difficult. Good ball movement for Arizona, but Allen misses the three, gets it back. Nice feed underneath. And Ristich couldn't finish. Two good opportunities there to take the lead for Arizona. Well, Gonzaga was very fortunate there. Perkins went after that shot, took himself completely out of the play and allowed Allen to get that offensive board. Sabonis with a running hook shot over Ristich, and the lead is three. I think Gonzaga's got to continue to pound the ball inside. Keep going right at the big guys for Arizona. Make them guard. Sabonis got his hands on that pass. It's loose. Allen comes up with it. And now it bounces out to Trier. Shot clock did not reset. The ball did not hit the rim. It's still plenty of time. Yep. Gabe York has got to be active. Allen spinning into traffic, and it's out of bounds. Arizona ball with just two on the shot clock. Anytime you spin into traffic, you are vulnerable to getting the ball taken away. No matter how good of a ball handler you are, oftentimes you're going to get it knocked out of, out of your hands. Got to watch the lob and then a quick catch and shoot. It'll be Gabe York to inbound for Arizona. Allen for three. Long rebound to Melson. Melson trying to take it the distance right into the chest of the defender, and that'll be a charge as Alonzo Trier, the freshman from Seattle, stepped in. Well, a nice job by Trier to get the call. He established that guarding position. He had two feet on the floor facing the ball handler. I don't think that was, frankly, a charge, but you give Trier a ton of credit. Those are difficult calls, and he made it in transition. The referee is just on the opposite side of the floor. Anderson behind the back in the paint. Now back out looking for help as Wiltshire didn't buy on anything. York tries to slam it in and was met at the rim by Sabonis. Wiltshire got it. Wiltshire with a dozen. Zags by five. And this place is seriously loud right now. Anderson rejected by Wiltshire. The Gonzaga Biggs getting it done at both ends of the floor. Sabonis counted. And Sean Miller needs to use another timeout. Gonzaga known for its offense, but it has been the Zag defense that has made the difference over the last few minutes. A tremendous block by Demonis Sabonis on a dunk attempt by Gabe York, and that started a, an excellent break for Gonzaga. This the second in the sequence, Demonis Sabonis getting the ball with Ristich on his back and takes it over that right shoulder. And then Kyle Wilcher following up the Sabonis block with a block of his own. This is a very good defensive team that Mark Few has got. And how quickly did those Gonzaga managers get those chairs out there? <laughs> you know, we've not only got two top preseason yes. top 25 teams, we've got two preseason top 25 managerial staff. Two of the best managerial groups on the West Coast, it goes without saying. Not only have they scored all the points, but Wilcher and Sabonis Jay have taken 16 of the 17 shots by Gonzaga. They're doing exactly what you said they should do, get that ball inside. You know, I give credit to the Gonzaga guards because they've, they've stuck with it, getting the ball inside. They realize they have an advantage and they're taking advantage of it. Uh, but it, as good as the offense has been for Gonzaga, I think the defense has been even better. I mean, Arizona's got four of their last 17 from the field. And almost every shot they've gotten has been a contested shot. 8.03 to go in the first half. Gonzaga leading by seven over Arizona. Arizona 6-1 and in the season. We mentioned the only loss was down in Fullerton to Providence. They've beaten Boise State twice. They needed overtime to beat Santa Clara with all the all the players they've lost. They're still kind of finding their way, but they are 6-1 and in the season. Gonzaga is 5-1. and Their only loss to Texas A&M, and they're led by a legitimate All-America candidate, Jay, in Kyle Wilcher.
Well, Kyle Wilcher is a great scorer. Yeah, he may not be the best defender. He's not the best athlete. But he is a phenomenal offensive player, a guy that can play pick and pop basketball. His range, an excellent shot fake, his shot prep, and he has improved as a defender. I mean, Ryan Anderson is a very good offensive player, and he moved his feet to stay in front, blocked that shot, started a break for Gonzaga. But you get him in a two-man game with Demonis Sabonis, and it is really difficult to deal with because you got one-on-one -on -one coverage in the post. And then you certainly can't help off of Wilcher because he can easily knock down a three shot fake put it on the floor and get another shot There's no doubt they miss Karnowski in the size and the passing and some of the things he can do But his loss actually means more minutes for this combination of Sabonis and Wilcher. Yeah, I mean, they've got such a good Trio of big guys that if any one of them is out of commission whether by fouls or you have a you know, The back spasms that Karnowski's going through right now. You can weather that York lost it. Tranginis comes up with a loose ball. Melson. See, there's the pick and pop. Wiltshire again. He's got 14. So difficult to guard. Sets a little ball screen. You try to stop the penetration by Perkins, and all of a sudden he Wiltshire pops to an open area, and he hardly ever misses when he's that open. Jackson Cartwright misses the shot, then comes up with the offensive rebound, and a fresh 30 for Arizona, in desperate need of a bucket and just to settle things down. Anderson left it away short. He is now 0 for 4 and scoreless in the game. This can get out of hand in a hurry if Arizona doesn't respond. Again, the two-man action. Again, Wiltshire with a jumper, and again, he hits! They are just cutting up Arizona with that pick-and-pop action. Just cutting them up. It's a 10-0 run for Gonzaga. With that rotation, if that shot were taken away, you'd have Sabonis coming into the low post. York with a drive and a kick. Trier for three. Rebound, Melson. Trier is an excellent shooter. A little bit streaky, but when he starts hitting, he can really open some things up. Now Sabonis gets a touch and turns it over. York ahead. Jackson Cartwright into traffic. Can't finish, and there's a foul on the follow, and Anderson will be at the free throw line. Well, most big guys, when they set a ball screen, they are going to roll to the basket. Just a ball reversal, set a little ball screen, and Kyle Wilcher just pops to that open area and he catches he gets that ball up and out really quickly his shooting motion is so compact he was in los angeles this summer at that nike basketball academy and you know i thought that ben simmons of lsu was the best player out there and proved it and i felt that chris dunn of providence was the best guard but the best overall offensive player was Kyle Wilcher. He was almost unstoppable with his ability to knock down shots, that shot fake he had. Second foul on Nelson. He goes to the bench. And McClellan comes back in. And now Anderson will get a breather as Tollefson takes his place. They need a big game from Anderson, Tollefson, Ristich. The Arizona Bigs are going to have to be as good as they can be for their team to have a chance here today. Well, they've got to find a way to manufacture some points. Because if they're playing in the half court, you know, Gabe York is going to have to find a way to get open shots. So bonus the save, tipped out of bounds, still Gonzaga ball. Coming up after us on ESPN today, what a matchup we have. It is the women's Jimmy V Classic presented by Corona. Number one UConn, led by Brianna Stewart, taking on number three Notre Dame. Uh, about as good as it gets. UConn's won three consecutive national championships, and Stewart has won three consecutive Final Four Most Outstanding Player Awards. It's amazing. By the time Brianna Stewart is done and with her college career, she will likely be the most decorated yeah. college player ever. I mean, we were just at UCLA the other night for that win that the Bruins had over Kentucky. Got a chance to see Annie Myers-Drysdale, one of the greatest women's players of all time. And you have to put Brianna Stewart up with any player that's ever played the women's game. Just a remarkable talent. Also already three gold medals internationally for the United States as well. It's UConn and Notre Dame coming up right after us today here on ESPN. The foul there on McClellan. And at the line is Ristich. And the Tarzuski injury is not a, a short-term thing right now. The initial prognosis with a foot injury was four to six weeks. He's about a week into that. 
So Ristich, as you said, has got a very good offensive game. He can rebound, but they want to see the defense keep progressing for him. But he's going to be a significant factor for Arizona in the next few weeks. You know, Dan, I've been to Spokane so many times. It's, a, it's really a wonderful community, and the people are so nice. But once they throw the ball up, they're not that nice. <laughs> this is a difficult place it to play. Is. The students are right behind us, hovering over top of us, and it is a loud, fully-fueled crowd here in this early Saturday afternoon. There we are, and there they are, right there. This program is supported at the highest level, not just from the administration and the university, but this whole community gets behind Gonzaga. It's very much like what you see in Tucson with the Zags. How about Ryan Edwards? Jeez. That's your that's your fourth big. How many how many college teams, let alone a team out of the West Conference, a West Coast Conference, can boast a, a seven footer as their fourth big guy? A seven one, two hundred ninety five pound fourth big guy. Well, he's got good size, very good hands, and he's skilled. I mean, he gets pushed off the lane by Ristich, and just goes right over that left shoulder with a nice little jump hook. If Edwards can come into the ball game, give quality minutes, and play good defense. And he's going to find some minutes out there. And finally, someone other than Wiltshire and Sabonis scores. The tip up and in for Tollefson, right over the top of Sabonis. Looks like Sabonis was trying to time his leap because the ball was bouncing up on the rim, and Tollefson got the better of him. Well, he just didn't get into Tollefson and box him out. Well, he's a big guy. You always love to miss free throw because it's just an easy rebound. Perkins, no. Tollison down with a rebound. Allen, two years ago, scored 26 a game at the junior college level. Misses that floater, and down with a rebound is Dranginis as he leads the Zags up the floor. Dranginis with a huge tip in right at the end of the UConn game of the Bahamas, or Gonzaga may not have won that game. Now we got a foul going against Arizona on the interior. There was Tollison going against Edwards inside, and Edwards so big when he ducked in, Tollison had no choice but to grab him to try to get around. You know, Sean Miller said before the season, Jay said, hey, it's going to be different. When you lose players the caliber of Johnson and Ashley and McConnell and Hollis Jefferson, three of whom are in the NBA right now, Ashley's in the D League, he said it's going to be different. But he believes that even though there could be some bumps in the road in November, December, he still believes they got a chance to be a very good team. January, February, McClellan scores off the inbounds. Now Justin Simon, a freshman from Temecula, California, is fouled. McClellan and Perkins screening up top, and that opened things up for McClellan to just come to, through the backside and get that easy little layup. And when you're guarding the ball on out-of-bounds underneath, you have got to angle yourself to take away the middle and force the force the pass to go to the outside. What you're really doing when you're guarding out of bounds underneath is you're protecting the basket. That's that's the first job. Simon misses them both. And McClellan comes into the ball game and. From the opening tap, he's been able to run the point when he's been out there. That allows Josh Perkins to work off the ball. And Sabonis fouled by Ryan Anderson to take us to the under four media timeout. Big first half for Wiltshire and Sabonis. The Zags lead by 10. I'm Adam Van Burke coming up on the Jeep Halftime Report. Seth Greenberg introducing Mike Hopkins, the evolution of the coaching style. Dan, I know Billis is bringing it. Seth is already in midseason form. <laughs> Seth was born in midseason form. Seth, I don't want this to worry you, but somebody called me Mr. Greenberg here today. 30 to 20, Gonzaga leading Arizona. And one of the most important parts of the game, getting into a timeout, Jay. Take us through it. Well, the Gonzaga managers, top 10 in the country, led by Tim Stoddard there, the blonde with the glasses on. He's their, uh, their head manager. He's a biomedical major. He's pre-med. But they've got, they've got an outstanding group of managers. Jacob Salazar is the best passer. He throws bullets when the guys are, are warming up. 
Now, the Arizona managers are outstanding, too, but we're giving a little more love to the home team right now. I like how uh, Brian described himself to you. He's the glue guy of the manager crew. Yeah, Brian yeah. Pete. <laughs> and then Kurt Bambauer yeah. is the best jump shooter of the Gonzaga managers. Those guys put in about 40 hours a week right. working as managers because obviously they have to get here long before practice starts. They stay after practice in order to get their work done. Just in a, the hardest working people in show business. Sabonis with another bucket for Gonzaga. And there's the first field goal of the game for Alonzo Trier, McDonald's All-American. Tell people what they need to know about Trier. Well, he's, he's an outstanding young prospect. And he's going to be an excellent player. He can really shoot the ball. And he's a, a very good athlete. Played USA Basketball for Sean Miller this last summer. He's got a great future ahead of him. But he's got to get more aggressive, not only offensively, but I think he's got to work to become a better defender. Like most freshmen have to deal with that. Great with tip by McClellan to get the ball back out. Wiltshire banks in another one. He's got 18 points. Just a super skilled player. And he had Kadeem Allen on him there on the switch. Just took him down into the post. He was a step off, and his shot fake is so good that he gets defenders off balance so easily and then can really take advantage of it. York misses a jumper. Wiltshire down with a rebound. What would you tell people defending Wiltshire about the shot fake? You just tell them to stay down all the time? If yeah, you can, but or? that's the thing. You talk about staying down. Perkins yeah. coast to coast. Boy, the transition defense for Arizona really lacking there. And you have to worry a little bit about this really getting away from Arizona. The last couple minutes are going to be really important. If they can get a couple scores, a couple stops, they can get back back into this one, but it also could go the other way on them. Arizona's got to run their offense harder. Their cuts are slow. Tollefson, a streaky three-point shooter, misses it, and Sabonis down with his fifth rebound of the game. Now, one of the things, Dan, that Gonzaga's done really well this season, they're an excellent three-point defensive team. They've guarded the line very well. They've only given up 21 made threes on the season. And uh, you, you combine a, a good three-point defensive team in Gonzaga with a, a limited three-point shooting team in Arizona and they better get some things done on the offensive glass Arizona to get some second shots because they are missing a lot of first shot opportunities as we mentioned they've had a lot of changes they lost four really good players from last year do you see Arizona developing into a team that could challenge for the Pac-12 championship oh they'll, they'll absolutely challenge I mean it's so early in the season and this team is going to get better and better Trier with a tough baseline jumper well, you called it tough. And that was a difficult shot. And if you got, if you have to rely on making those shots for 40 minutes, you know, it's going to be a, it's going to be a long afternoon in the kennel. We got a chance to see UCLA in their big win over Kentucky a couple of nights ago. Uh, Oregon, a dangerous team. Well, they they lost to UNLV last night. They pass off the chest of Wiltshire. He's playing volleyball to try to keep it alive, but finally it winds up in the hands of Arizona. We needed to give that ball to York. He was wide open. And the foul is called, but before the shot, I believe. No basket. Vern Harris, Dick Cartmel, and Michael Greenstein are officiating crew today here in Spokane. The foul on Perkins is second. You said a couple of nights ago when we were down in, uh, in Los Angeles, you think the Pac-12 could be wide open. Three, four teams could compete. There's nobody great yet. Uh, you've got some, I think, teams that are very good and have a chance to be really good. UCLA's in there if they play like they did against Kentucky and play with that kind of intensity on both ends of the floor. They've got good personnel. They're just young in spots. Uh, but you mentioned Oregon, uh, that I think is going to continue to get better, even though they got beat last night. What about Cal? Cal is very good. They're just not deep. They're young. You know, with uh, with Jalen Jalen Brown is a big time talent. Ivan Rab, another big time talent. Lefty, 6'10, can block shots and score. And Tyrone Wallace, one of the best players in the league. Final minute of the first half, controlled for the most part by that guy, Kyle Wilcher. He's got 20. How about that pass? The pass led Kyle Wilcher right into his move. Boy, Wilcher has been magnificent in this first half. And his teammates have looked to him. You know, nobody, there's been no selfishness on the part of this Gonzaga team. They, they're, their go-to guy's been the open man, but they've also looked to get the ball inside. Trier with the last six points for Arizona and make it eight as he is keeping them in the game. Five seconds in the half. 
McClellan for three. And Jackson Cartwright down with the rebound as the half expires. What a half it was for Kyle Wilcher. He had 20. Sabonis had 12. And Gonzaga leading Arizona by 10 at the midway point of this game. We'll be back for the second half in about 15 minutes' time. But first, let's send you back to the studio. Find out what else is going on around the world of college basketball. Here's Adam Edberg. All right, Dan. Here at the Kettle in Spokane, what a first half it was for the big guys of Gonzaga. Kyle Wilcher had 20 points in the first half, leading the way, and his sidekick, DeMontis Sabonis, added in 12. The two of them outscored Arizona all on their own. Today's game is a part of ESPN's Journey to the Tourney, presented by Sonic, a season-long spotlight on games that will impact the tournament. Let's take a look now at our Sonic showdown, and here's the... Uh, the evidence of what Wiltshire and Sabonis have done. They've combined for 32 of Gonzaga's 38 points. Alonzo Trier had a great finish to the first half, but overall, Arizona really, really struggled. Kyle Wiltshire could be a first-team All-American this year. He's that good, and he had that good of a first half here today. And he got his points from all over the floor. Yeah. Pick and pop, knocking down three-point shots from mid-range, and then going into the post. That 20 points was really impressive and Gonzaga was looking for him at every opportunity on the break little shot fake knocking down a three and then he would set a screen and then go right into the post get an angle that was a beautiful pass to lead him right into his move and then just to step off the lane with a smaller defender shot fake spins off the glass every single shot in the book he has got and Demonis Sabonis his sidekick inside they were dominant Arizona didn't have an answer but Dan I just talked to Sean Miller and he was saying that on the offensive end, that he's really concerned about his team getting put into one-on-one -on -one situations, that they've got to play more together. Move the ball, move themselves, make harder cuts, set better screens, because if they're just going to go one-on-one, -on -one, they're not going to be able to beat a team like Gonzaga in this environment. They only had three assists on their 10 made field goals, shot only 32% from the field. Gonzaga shot 59% in the first half. In some ways, it's kind of amazing they're only down 10 right now. The Zags have the first possession of the second half. Well, in large measure, thanks to Alonzo Trier, because when Ryan Anderson and Gabe York haven't put any points on the board and you're having to watch Kyle Wilcher, this looks like a video game performance from Kyle yep. Wilcher. And as Jay mentioned, he has scored from everywhere, from the free throw line, from the post, mid-range, beyond the arc. Nice fake. York with a nice feed inside. Ristich will get it to go. And again, it's a 10-point game. Now that's Gabe York giving up a shot that was a good shot in order to get an easy layup. And Ristich almost didn't catch that ball. McClellan guarded by York. Now Perkins. They're just ball screen. Basically ball screen continuity side to side. Is that a headbutt? And Sabonis is held by Ristich. Both Ristich and Sabonis knocked heads when Sabonis faced up. Second on Ristich, and now Tollefson's going to come into the game early here in the second half. Ryan Anderson is going to go out. Anderson is the leader this year for Arizona, 16 points and 10 rebounds per game. And he was he did not have much of a first half. He has been held in check, and he's gone back to the bench here a minute into the second half. And Wiltshire get a shot off. He'll kick it back out and repost. That's just good offense. Just good offense. Didn't get the shot to go, but uh, that post-perimeter interaction, if you don't have it, kick it back out, repost. Arizona's not the type of team that double teams. They may have to at times when the ball goes inside in this one. I know they're prepared for it, but haven't felt the need to do it quite yet. And ball pressure, pressure on Trier forces him to make a U-turn. Shot clock's down to seven. Now Allen with move. a drive, and he's fouled by Perkins. Well, we're getting a chance to see one of the great players in college basketball. Give us an opportunity maybe to ask Jay who he thinks are some of the early season stars in the game. And Denzel Valentine, Michigan State, the presumptive number one on Monday after their win earlier today. Ben Simmons having the 43-point game. This is a pretty good group right here. It's a really good group. And if you had to pick a player of the year right now out of this five, you might go with Denzel Valentine of Michigan State. Uh, but Chris Dunn, I think, has been the nation's best point guard. Uh, just came off a triple-double. Just an excellent player. And a guy who's 
It reminds you of Dwayne Wade with the way he plays. He's got that length and athleticism. He can score. He's excellent defensively. He rebounds. There's nothing he doesn't do. And there's not been a better offensive player, certainly offensive big guy, than Kyle Wilcher. He's going to keep putting up numbers. This is not going to stop. He's just too talented. And if you haven't seen Chris Dunn, Providence plays Rhode Island tonight, 7 o'clock Eastern time on ESPNU. Gabe York knocks down to three, and don't look now, but it's a seven-point game. And that's the one thing Gonzaga did not want to have happen is to let Gabe York watch the ball go through the bucket. And they have been able to keep him and Ryan Anderson in check. They have not been able to keep Kyle Wilcher in check. He's got 25 points. Well, this could wind up being a 40-point afternoon for him. Gonzaga doing a good job on ball screen situations of keeping Arizona on one side of the floor. Nice finish by Tollefson, and he's got a chance for a three-point play. But well executed by Arizona. Arizona's starting to get more aggressive, but they've just got to get better cuts, better movement. Wilcher just badly out of position. Didn't stay between Tollefson and the basket. They wound up putting two hands on him. I didn't see where the foul was at the end of the play. I thought the foul was went right when Tollefson caught the ball. You know, anytime you have two hands on a ball handler, that's a foul no matter whether it's a... It doesn't matter the severity of it. That's, a, that's an automatic foul. It has been for many, many years. But I didn't see any contact at the end of the play. First foul on Wiltshire. Eight-point lead to Gonzaga. Just about three minutes into the second half here at the Kennel. Sabonis in the post. Lays it in. That's his go-to move, the little running hook. And he's got 14. Well, Gonzaga does such a good job of running fade screens, curls, and the like, and moving the ball from side to side and then going inside. York with a putback off his own miss, and it's an eight-point game again. Well, eight-point game, but Arizona's going to have to start getting some stops. McClellan with the drive. Off the rim down to Ristich. A chance for the Wildcats to get even closer. Allen driving right at Wilcher, and Wilcher, if he didn't block it, he certainly altered it. Impacted the attempt there by Allen. Look at McClellan with a burst of speed, but it rolls off the rim for him. Arizona cannot try to avoid block shots. They have to go right into the defense. Terrific shot by Gabe York. And York all of a sudden is into double figures with 12. The lead is down to five, and Mark Few needs a timeout. Nobody picked up Gabe York in transition. Silas Melson just looking at him. You got to pick him up at the three-point line, or he will do that. Welcome back to Spokane and welcome back to Jimmy V Week for Cancer Research here on the ESPN family of networks asking you to help us beat cancer. You can do it a couple of different ways. Log on to JimmyV.org or call 1-800-4-JIMMY-V. 100% every penny of your direct cash donations are awarded directly to cancer research. With Jay Billis, I'm Dan Schulman. Welcome back to the kennel the McCarthy, uh, McCarthy Athletic Center here on the campus of Gonzaga University in Arizona making a run here in the second half and they just got a steal after McClellan slipped and they need to look to Gabe York he's being guarded by Silas Melson he's got eight points in the second half and there it is the screen for the screener play now in isolation into Anderson bumping with Sabonis can't find any room got it back finish and a foul Arizona is hanging in there. What a nice play run out of the timeout by Sean Miller to get that isolation little two-man game. And Ryan Anderson has struggled, gets it knocked away. And those hands are down. That's going to be a foul 99% of the time. Hey, Tuesday on ESPN, it's the Jimmy V Classic presented by Corona. A couple of great games begins at 7 Eastern time. West Virginia and Virginia. Then the second game is Maryland and UConn. Both games from Madison Square Garden and also streaming live on Watch ESPN. A look at the top 10 now, but it will change Monday. Kentucky lost to UCLA. Maryland lost to Carolina. Michigan State blew out Binghamton today. Michigan State's going to go to number one. Uh, how far down do you think Kentucky and Maryland could fall? 
I think just a few spots. I can't imagine with the, the caliber of opponent. I mean, Kentucky might drop down to five or six or so. One team that I would really start watching in there is Oklahoma. You know, Buddy Heald is having an All-America caliber season. Poor defense on the weak side. Nobody in the lane. Everybody man-oriented, hugging up. Sabonis from Dranginis. Arizona in the second half shooting six of eight from the field. And this young man, Gabe York, has eight points. But Perkins comes up with the steal. One on three, looking for help. Needed to keep his dribble. Open is Melson. He'll miss the three. And Jackson Cartwright, the smallest man on the floor, comes down with a rebound. York definitely playing with a lot more aggressiveness of the offensive end here in the second half. Tollison will miss the three. Tapped back out to York. Pitts in the corner will miss a three. Well, that was a good shot, though, by Elliott Pitts and a terrific job by Anderson to keep that ball alive and tap it out to a teammate. Gonzaga's led by as many as 14. It was 10 at the half. It's five now. Perkins takes a bump and will finish. Perkins almost hesitant when he put that ball on the deck, but realized that he had Jackson Cartwright, the smaller defender, gave him an angle, and he just went right into that smaller defender and was able to finish the play. Like, Perkins right away has to take that drive. That's where he's got to get more aggressive as an offensive player. You know, he's, he's such a great passer and has such great vision. I think sometimes he, he looks at his offense second, and he's got to start looking for it first because with that vision, he'll find open people as a result. Three-point play, and the lead is eight for Gonzaga. Sean Miller just went back to Dusan Ristich and Alonzo Trier as Pitts and Anderson went to the bench. A really good answer by Gonzaga. They've been punched to start this second half and responded. York gets away from Melson and knocks down another one. Boy, it's amazing. When you let an outstanding shooter get started, and Gonzaga kind of let their guard down, let him get started. Now he's incredibly confident. He can make the tough ones now. York, a 36% shooter from beyond the arc, but he's three for three today on three-pointers. And he's now got 150 threes in his career at Arizona. And he is calling for the ball. Trier never even looked his way. And Trier says, you know what? You're pretty good out there, but I'm doing okay in here. Trier had eight points right at the end of the first half to keep Arizona in it. And this combination has gotten the Wildcats back within three. A little more verb on the part of Arizona defensively, but their rotations have got to improve. Wiltshire a miss. Another opportunity. No basket. Offensive foul, Sabonis called for a moving screen, negates the three by Wiltshire. That's a good that's, call. That's a very good call. That's, yeah. a, that's more yeah. a cross body block. Yeah. It's doing disservice to a screen to even call that a screen. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't <laughs> even see that because the offensive player, the defensive player, was in our line of sight, but that was a great call. It's just, just not a smart play on the part of Sabonis. Zone look here from the Zags, and a turnover. One of the few turnovers for Arizona. They've gone 31 possessions with only one turnover. Perkins cross-court, Melson. Ryan Edwards back in the game for Gonzaga. Melson's got to look to drive it. He does, throws up a tough shot, too much size there in Ristich. Looked like he got fouled. York, again! Wow. And York has tied the game. What a comeback here in the second half for Arizona, led by their senior, Gabe York. He's on fire right now, and we're tied at 50 here at the Kennel. Other wires carriers may... Gabe York came out of the locker room on fire here in the second half. He is five for six from the floor, four for four from three-point range in the second half. 14 points already, and that 10-point deficit, Jay, is gone. Boy, that is beyond NBA range, and Gabe York came into this game with 16 made threes. He has been basically the entire three-point attack for this Arizona team shooting 36% the rest of the team 23% on the season from three 
And Gonzaga looking to get the ball inside out of that timeout, trying to exploit the advantage that they did in the first half where they played through their big guys because Arizona didn't have any answer for Gonzaga's big guys in the first half. There's Ryan Edwards at the line after the foul. As Jay mentioned, getting some minutes with Karnowski out with a back injury. Second game in a row that Karnowski has missed. The senior, they're hoping it's not too much of a long-term thing. Arizona's going to be without their big man, Caleb Tarzuski, for a while. Left foot injury. He's over on the bench with a boot on his foot at at least three to four more weeks. There has got to be in the Twitter, uh, there's got to be a Twitter account uh, Shemek Karnowski's beard. <laughs> that, that thing has got to have its own Twitter account. 2-3 <laughs> zone again to Gonzaga. Get somebody into that middle that can make a play. Draw Edwards up and drive him. Anderson may be that guy. Floater off the glass and a good soft touch for the fifth-year senior to tie the game. That's where Anderson's going to be able to operate. Right in the middle of that zone, and he needs to take on Edwards. Off the dribble. The California kid, a very good player for three years at Boston College. Wiltshire pouring it on. He's got 27. And that pick and pop is just NBA caliber. That puts the defense in a really difficult position. They've had no answer for it. Anderson defended by Wiltshire. Over him to tie it again. How about that pass fake by Anderson? The two best offensive players for Arizona have stepped it up in the second half. Anderson and York. Wiltshire gets inside. Soft touch. It'll go. And he's up to 29. He takes his time. So skilled. He's got that old man post game. I guess I should say it's an old man old school. <laughs> Ristich looking for room, got it back, and ties it again. They keep trading buckets here at the kennel. And Sean Miller is going to use a timeout. Wait, how, about, how about Arizona hanging in there? The Wildcats have really fought in this second half to get back in this and make this a really tight game. Pick and pop, you can do it all day, but you got to be able to make it. And Kyle Wiltrick can make it. And Anderson against that 2-3 zone catching the ball and making a great individual move. We got a game. Sick. I'm Adam Van Berg back in our college basketball studios updating you on Harvard and Kansas. This is Evan Cummins here. Rocking the rim. Right now the Kansas has the three-point lead on ESPN2. Dan? Dan, and thank you tonight on ESPN. The Pac-12 championship game presented by Dr. Pepper, number 20 USC, number 7 Stanford. The Cardinals still holding out hope for a spot in a college football playoff with a win and some help. Meanwhile, here at the Kennel, what a second half for Arizona. What a comeback. They were down as many as 14 in the first half, down 10 at halftime, and led by Gabe York. They have roared back to tie it here in the second half. Well, Gabe York's got 18 points overall, 14 in the second half. Arizona's 12 out of 17 in the second half. It just turned it over in a yep. five-second call. Arizona, five guys guarding five minutes, and Mark Few is beside himself right now at his team's lack of execution. Arizona shooting 70% in the second half. After shooting 32% in the first half, Dragon is trying to get a timeout called, but was unable to do it. Both teams are down to one timeout remaining already. Lonzo Trier's got Wilcher on him. Good, good call to drive that. This is the left-handed runner. The ball is still loose, and it's out of bounds to the Zags. Some full court pressure from Arizona. Perkins waves everybody off, says, I got this. They go right back into Wilcher. He's got 29. You basically have to. What a steal by Allen. Allen picks the pocket of Perkins and then can't finish the layup. And he's caught behind the play and grimacing in some pain. But then Dranginis turns it over as York comes up with a steal. Three consecutive turnovers committed by the Zags. Boy, York. Trying to do a lot right there. Misses the floater and Wiltshire down with a rebound. Yeah, that was just an unnecessary one-on-one -on -one move when there was no advantage. 
Two-man game. Perkins had Wilcher, didn't get the ball to him. And then is called for the travel. That is four consecutive possessions in which the Zags have turned it over. Boy, just a, a fabulous job by Arizona trapping off the ball screen. And Perkins was not low, not expecting it. And stood straight up and wound up traveling when he fell down. 14th turnover committed by the Zags. Arizona going with a very small, quick, athletic lineup right now. Well, Basically Arizona. four guards and Anderson. Arizona looked like they were about to get blown out. And that shot would have given them the lead. Their last lead was at 4-2. to two. Got to go inside. Get the ball. And let Wilcher and Sabonis play ball together. And Sabonis draws the foul. It'll be on Pitts. Yeah, that was just a little elbow series play. You get the ball to Sabonis and let Wilcher set a ball screen for him on the elbow. And then you can throw back to Wilcher for a three. He got a high-low set. And another foul. Pitts again, his second, the team's fifth. It's okay, says Sean Miller. Pitts is about 6'5", Wilcher 6'9". But again, Arizona going with a smaller lineup, trying to put some pressure on. Pitts will have his hands full. The screen for the screener play. Parker Justin Cartwright did a nice job of getting through. Now the drive by Perkins. And a late whistle will result in a foul and a free throw opportunity for Josh Perkins. So three quick fouls on Arizona. First one goes on Jackson Cartwright. Mark Few talking to Perkins about keeping his composure out there. He refused the ball screen. And those are... Those are plays that he can and should finish. He got, got pushed just a little bit, and when you're going that rate of speed, it can be difficult to keep your eyes on the rim. You, know, you're, you always have to keep your eyes on the rim because your eyes make layups. You keep your head up, you have more of an opportunity to make the, the shot. One of two, tapped by Wilcher, and then he had the ball knocked away and almost lost his shorts as well. <laughs> And it's Arizona ball with a chance to take the lead. McClellan on York. He's got size and athleticism. Jackson Cartwright knows Sabonis wraps up the rebound his 11th of the afternoon. That's a good job by Eric McClellan to keep the ball away from Gabe York. Wiltshire cross-court Dranginis. Now Sabonis isolated in the post on Anderson. Anderson gets some help. That leaves Perkins open. And it'll be out of bounds to Arizona. Well, here's something you don't see every day. As we go back to this rebound attempt, Wilcher goes up for the ball, and somehow, I think Pitts accidentally <laughs> almost took his shorts off. Thank goodness for compression shorts. <laughs> Again, Arizona looking for the lead. Everybody rising to their feet here at the kennel, trying to help out the Zags at the defensive end. Trier, the drive, and oh. the finish. What a finish with the left hand by Alonzo Trier. He is a scorer. And it'll be Arizona ball again. Ray Gonzaga looking for the home run, thrown over the top. But Trier just driving a good defender in Dranginis blew by him to the left. And Gonzaga so turnover prone here in the second half as well. Another reason why Arizona has been able to get right back into it. Cartwright, Jackson Cartwright off a beautiful feed and the lead now three for Arizona. Just cleared one side, got a little back pick right around the nail. And you don't often expect to have a lob thrown to your 5'9 point guard, but not a good job communicating. Dranginis, tough shot, in and out, follow, yes! Boy, what a game. And Sean Miller's got to be very pleased with the fight that his team has shown in the second half. First true road game. You got a, basically a brand new team. And down as many as 14 in the early going. Trier defended hard by Dranginis, had to give it up. And McClellan could have gotten that ball. York. 
Rebound McClellan. Seven minutes to go here at the kennel and a one-point lead for visiting Arizona. Got to get it to Wiltshire. He's got pits on him in the post. Wiltshire with 31 already in this game. Leans in. Tipped back up and in by Sabonis. And the lead changes hands again. Both coaches waiting for that media timeout. They've each only got one left. We will have a timeout on the next whistle. Anderson off the bottom of the rim. Pitts gets it. Jackson Cartwright short on the three. Anderson with the finish. Gonzaga had so many opportunities to end that possession, but Arizona just more alert and quicker to the ball. They're trading baskets, and the Wildcats are back up by one. Well, you really have to admire the way Arizona has played in the second half. Wiltshire tries to follow up his own miss. York with a loose ball. The Wildcats have absolutely battled. Just battled. Wiltshire's bleeding. Just tried to show one of the officials about it. Bleeding on his left hand. Nobody has noticed. They'll play on into the next whistle. Long stretch without a whistle. Now we'll have one as Jackson Cartwright drives and draws the foul. Arizona is leading by one in a great back and forth game here in Spokane. Backdoor cut for Jackson Cartwright, the smallest man on the floor. Sabonis with a putback for the Zags. We got ourselves a game. Back in our college basketball studios, I'm Adnan Burke updating you in Harvard in Kansas over on ESPN2. This is Corey Johnson here with the lay-in for Harvard. So, hanging out right now. It is tied right now. 56, seven and a half to go. And just a friendly reminder, coming up next, a terrific women's basketball matchup. Brianna Stewart and UConn against Notre Dame. A rematch of the championship from a year ago. Dan, back to you. And uh, thank you. What a game here. One point lead Arizona over Gonzaga. A few minutes ago, Jay said there has to be a Twitter account for Shemek Karnowski's beard. And wouldn't you know it, there is seven followers at the moment. I think they're going to have a few more after this. But now they want you to grow a beard. Well, I, I don't think I can do that. I can't grow any hair on my head, clearly. <laughs> but I, I uh, they, actually, Karnowski's beard tweeted at me during the break. And I answered and let him know, you know. Shemek Karnowski's beard only has seven followers. That's totally unacceptable. Where, where do they yeah. reside? In his beard? <laughs> <laughs> he's got to have more. Than, oh, that he's beard bump deserves that way more than seven yeah. followers. The Pope making an appearance at the game. Didn't know the Pope was a Zags fan. <laughs> what a second half here. What a comeback by Arizona. Trailing by 10 at halftime. Gabe York, Alonzo Trier leading them back despite a huge performance from Kyle Wilcher, who's got 31 points in the game. Arizona has the lead, and Parker Jackson Cartwright has had a couple of big plays here in the second half. Is at the free throw line right now. You know, a good bit of this second half, and Arizona's success in it has been turnovers. They have forced some Gonzaga turnovers. Gonzaga's got 15 turnovers in this game, and what... Sean Miller was concerned about with his team what they turned it over. They've only coughed it up six times. I mean, to have a plus nine advantage in, in turnovers on the road, you know, that, that is what has put Arizona with a chance to win this thing with five minutes to go. The Zags had turnovers on four straight possessions earlier in the second half. That's when Arizona took the lead. Wiltshire misses the three and the rebound down to Trier. Trier crosses over and lays it in. What a spectacular athletic play that was. Nobody in Gonzaga's transition defense can stop the ball. I mean, Trier made a fabulous play, but nobody gave him, nobody gave him any resistance yeah. at all. Trier now six for nine from the floor, 14 points. Wiltshire, not this time, and Trier down with another rebound is fifth. Well, it looks like Wiltshire's trying to get physical in some of his shots. He should just go right up over the top as he did in that first half. And they've kind of gotten away, Jay, from the pick and pop that was so successful for them in the first half. Well, they tried it on that last play with a, they did a ball screen and then a fade screen with Sabonis. And 
Wiltshire's just got to make him. I mean, he was knocking him down in the first half. He's not making him right now. York with the shot clock down to one. Got it off in time. Wait no, a minute. Didn't. They're saying he did. They, they're going to check it. And right away, Vern Harris, the lead official in this game, blew the whistle, and they'll go right to the monitor to see if that shot should count or not. Arizona trying to put yeah, no basket. basket. Arizona's trying to put Gonzaga into ball screen situations and see if they can attack Kyle Wilcher. I don't know about that. That was close. Boy, that was very close, but that was a very quick review, and it goes the Zags way. I like the quick review, though. If you're going to review it, it's yeah. always good to be quick. <laughs> Four-point deficit of Gonzaga. Now Gonzaga trying to spread the floor, get much better movement. There's a little cross screen to get Sabonis isolated in the post. Goes back to his strong side, too strong. Offensive rebound, Drangin is so active on the glass at both ends. And now a foul. Into the bonus, Gonzaga will go. Sabonis will be at the line when we come back. The Zags now down four at home. Six. More great college hoops action coming your way today and tonight on the ESPN family of networks, including number three and number one on the women's side of the women's Jimmy V, Notre Dame and UConn right after us over on ESPN2. In just a little while, it'll be Buffalo taking on number seven Duke. Then you can go out for dinner, come on back, and watch Arizona State host number 18, Texas A&M, 1030 Eastern time tonight on ESPN2. Dan Schulman, Jay Billis, Arizona with a great second half. They lead by four with under four minutes to go. Arizona taking advantage of some transition opportunities. They've scored some points on the break in the second half. We still feel like Gonzaga's got to keep going inside. Well, Sabonis and Wilcher combined for 49 in this game. Sabonis misses the front end. Well, Arizona has really quieted this crowd. This has not been the same building in the second half. Anderson one on one with Sabonis. And a foul called on Demonta Sabonis, who has the same expression on his face after almost every foul. That's his third. Shaking his head and still not buying these calls that are going against him. Well, he should buy them because he's got to go up and try to challenge this shot in the air instead of being straight up there because he brings those arms down. Yep. When you bring those arms down, you're standing straight, straight on the floor. The referees are going to call that every time. They are less likely to call it if you jump, and you're more likely to go straight up if you jump. Anderson, a 71% shooter on the season coming into this game. This is the first. Arizona has left some points on the line. Just 8 for 16 today. And they have put themselves in a position to win on the road in a really difficult environment. And now the key for Arizona is going to be force Gonzaga to take a tough shot. And you got to have all five red shirts rebounding. Gonzaga has scored only 23 points in the second half. Dranginis might have gotten away with a little push off there, although Trier might have embellished the contact. Perkins uses the screen, misses the three. And it's going to be, I believe, we're blocked out by some of the cheerleaders here, but it looks like it's going to be Arizona ball. Yes, Sabonis was on the end line when he was going after that ball, and when any part of you is out of bounds and you're touching the ball, the ball's out of bounds. Right there. So a good call gives it back over to Arizona. We've got three minutes to go when the Wildcats have the ball and a five-point lead. Boy, Sabonis is wrestling with Anderson down low. Wiltshire the rebound off the miss by York. That wasn't the shot for Arizona. Been over four minutes since Gonzaga made a field goal. Now, good part of that has been Arizona's defense, but Gonzaga has not been crisp on the offensive end. A lot of unforced errors. Another one. 
Perkins turns it over. Allen comes up oh. with a steal behind the back, and then he's blocked by Dranginis. It'll stay with Arizona, but that one deserves another look. That is a gutsy play <laughs> to go behind your back in transition like that. What a terrific move, and give credit to Dranginis for making a great block from the back end. Tallis has got to move. And a turnover. York was trying to holler out a play right there, and I don't think some of his teammates heard him. They didn't want to waste a timeout. Each team with one timeout remaining. Boy, what a time not to run an out-of-bounds play the right way to get it inbounds. Wiltshire cradles it, gets close, but left it a little bit short, got it back, and puts it in. 33 for Kyle Wiltshire. Inside, two minutes to go. Grand Guinness on York. And York is fouled. It'll be a one-and-one one coming for Gabe York. Looked like Kyle Wilcher got fouled on the original shot that he put up. As he's headed to the basket, I thought he got fouled there by Tollison, but he stuck with it and then got the second chance opportunity to go. That's a terrific play by a, uh, a senior that's had a great afternoon. Melson back in for McClellan. Melson a better offensive player. York, a good free throw shooter. His first attempts, attempt of the day, and he misses the front end. It's a one possession game. Gonzaga with the ball. Again, the clear out for Wilcher. Kicks it back out, Perkins. Drangin has thought about it. Perkins will do more than that. Perkins was fading on that shot. He didn't go straight up and down, and not shockingly, the ball went to the side that he was fading toward. Sean Miller hollering out a play. York will put it up just inside the arc, a little bit short. Long rebound down to Allen, and he'll put it right back up. He didn't need to do that, and Sabonis comes down with a rebound. Perkins all the way, rejected. And it'll be Gonzaga ball on the turnover. Boy, there are some big-time plays being made at the rim by each team. What a block by Allen as Perkins was going right into his body to try to draw a foul and finish the play. Hits back in for Tollefson. Gonzaga with the ball, down by three, less than a minute to go in regulation. Does it go to Wiltshire? It should. Pick and pop. It does. Off the back of the rim, Sabonis, no. Loose ball down to Arizona. Well, you can't get a more point-blank opportunity. Down three, Gonzaga's going to play it out. And Sean Miller wants a timeout. One of the new rules is when the ball is live, the player has to tall, call the timeout. So Miller's looking right at and his player saying, call a timeout, call a timeout. And they'll use their last timeout with 29 seconds to go. Hey, tonight, after the Pac-12 football championship, Stay for Sports Center at night with SVP. Scott will have highlights from a busy day in sports and a breakdown championship Saturday in college football. Sports Center at night after USC and Stanford on ESPN and streaming live on Watch ESPN. You said it a few times early, Jay. It looked like Arizona might get run out of the gym, but Gabe York made sure that didn't happen. Well, Gabe York has really been the difference in the second half. You know, he's a, a player who's always been an outstanding shooter, but now he's a complete basketball player. Much stronger a better athlete than he was a year or two ago he has worked on his total game just a much more complete player he's got a runner he's got a floater he's far more aggressive he's the number one option on every opponent's scouting report they are looking to take Gabe York out of the game and on this last play he's got to be the focal point of Gonzaga's defense you have to stay on his body you've got to force him to take a tough two you can't let him get an open three and you certainly can't foul him well, another good game. 
Uh, Gonzaga and Arizona the score you see right now is the identical score by which Arizona beat Gonzaga last year down in Tucson that was an overtime game Arizona five and one all time in the series Gonzaga led most of the day but it's been the Wildcats lately pitch to inbound for Arizona 12 on the shot clock Grand Guinness on York Grand Guinness is bigger very good defender screen by Anderson York into Anderson. Yes, five-point lead Arizona. Boy, what a step back and a great pass by Gabe York. And Zaga needs a very quick score. Sabonis trying to take it to the rim, kicks it out. Drangin is Wiltshire for three, not there. Rebound, York. And the foul with 4.8 to go. And what a road win this is going to be for Arizona in their first true road game of the season. It feels like an absolute theft. What a, what a great performance in the second half by an emerging emerging group of Wildcats. I'm not sure that Sean Miller and his staff really thought this team was capable of this. If everything went right, but for them to get punched in the mouth in the first half and to come back with you know, this kind of fight in the second half, th this is kind of a, a team-building win for Arizona and a confidence-building win. They have outscored Gonzaga 40 to 25 in the second half as Perkins will get it off or Nelson rather it does not go at the end of the game and Arizona comes into the kennel one of the hardest places to win in in all of college basketball and a gutty performance in the second half led by Gabe York as they beat the Zags 68 to 63 thanks for joining us here during Jimmy V week from the McCarthy Athletic Center the final score of the Wildcats 68 and the Zags 63. For Jay Billis, I'm Dan Schulman. Thanks for watching. Don't forget Notre Dame UConn women's action coming up next. But first, back to the studio.